Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Saturday and Tuesday. And we're reading Luke chapter 12. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable and said unto them, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, Hmm, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Hmm. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? You can't grow another inch, another foot by taking thought. That's my take on that. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things, but rather seek, here's the, here's the clitch right here, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which whack not, wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. All right. Now, this is what I want to say about that. The Lord gave me an illustration, I believe. And in this illustration, we take a light bulb. Let's take this light right here. I'm putting it right in front of the camera. Now, if you have a light in your room, I would like for you to stare at the light for a good 15 to 30 seconds. Get up close on it and stare at it. Now, look around your room first and see the details that are surrounding you. Then, look at the light. Stare at it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's give it a good 10 seconds. I'm going to... T minus 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bingo. Now, remove the light 
and look around, look ahead of you, look around, look at the things that are near you. And tell me what you see every time you blink. <laughs> every time you close your eyes. And when you look, there's that something, there's a, a ghost of what you just stared at right in between your eyeballs. I know you see it. It's only natural. Well, this is what we forget. What we stare at, what we focus on, can affect what we see. Most of us as human beings believe what we see. So if that light has been our focal point and we look around and we close our eyes, that light is still in our eyes and it affects what we see. It blurs the details in front of us. Look at that light 30 seconds and you really have a real image of it in your eyes. Now, I said that to say, I want to ask you a question. What are you focusing on? What is your life wrapped around? Where are your energies? Where do your emotions get entangled up with? Do you have worries that weigh you down? Do you have concerns that depress you, that upset you? What bothers you? Why are you staring at the thing that bothers you rather than the light of the living God you serve? Think about it. Your focus needs to be shifted. It's time for a shift. Shift your focus. Stop staring at the problems and stare at the light. When you stare at the light, the problems fade. The details fade because your eyes have been all consumed with the light. And it makes all the details fade in its presence. Because even when you close your eyes, you still see the light. And that's what God wants you to focus on. When you focus on the light, the details don't get you down. When you focus on the light, the details don't tick you off. Like Peter was saying, when something went down at his job and he talked to this young man and the man went off on him and he was trying to help him, he could have gone off on him focusing on the attitude. But he focused on the light and he came up with the right response which exemplified God's love, which opened the door for a new relationship and a better one. What are you focusing on? Your pride? Your position? It better not talk to me like that. I don't know who they think I am. You ain't nobody. No offense, but you get my drift. The light, that's your somebody. That's your substance. That's your everything. The light of the living God. He's a consuming fire. There's no light brighter than God. So why look at all the substitutes, all the maybes, all the if, ands, and buts? What are you looking at all that for? Focus your eyes on Jesus. He is a very present help. He's got your answer. He's got the love you need. He's got the patience you need. He's got the wisdom you need. Everything you need is in him. Not you, not your name, not your reputation, not your position, not people, not places, not what's in your wallet. It's in him. And when your focus is on the right thing, everything else fades. Listen, let me share this with you real quick. It's coming to me, so I believe I'm supposed to share it. It may not apply to all of you, but it will apply to some on YouTube and in our church family. When I was in ICU in, in uh, 2016, one of the church members of a particular church came by and prayed for me. 
Be careful who you have pray for you. I knew the person was not filled with the Holy Spirit. It was very obvious to me. Certain things were just direly lacking. Now, uh, uh, one time he came with his wife, the next time he came with one of the other members of the church. Each time this man came and prayed for me, I had to battle demons all night long. I'm already fighting for my win. I'm already fighting for my life. But I had to battle demons all night long. I was rebuking them left and right. Every time I rebuke one, another one would come. Every time I wake up, do battle, fall asleep, another one. It was an onslaught. It was a flood. Do you know what God said? When the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against your enemies, baby. Now, I was able to win all the battles. You see, I'm still here. But I made up my mind at that point. That particular church member will never pray for me again. He did not have the Holy Spirit, but he had some spirit in there. And he deposited it right there in my room when he left. And I said, no more. He will never pray. The second time, I don't need three strikes. Two strikes, I got the message. I saw it. Now, what I'm saying that to say is, had I been focused on my sickness, had I been focused on the fear of dying, had I been focused on, are they going to make a mistake and give me the wrong medication? Had I been worried that the next morning I might not be able to breathe and, and it, I might need surgery or I might need this, that, or the other, I might have really, really, really had a difficult time. But the whole time I was in that hospital, I knew God was in control. I knew I was in God's hands. I knew God was working out some details to get me healthy. I knew God had me there for a purpose. God, 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 the light was my focus. And that's what carries me through every difficult situation I go through. I don't go through with flying colors all the time. I'm human just like you. But I know what to focus on. I know what side my bread is buttered on. Trust me, you have to change your focus. Prayers get answered quicker. Your faith is stronger. When you focus on the right thing, that's what you see the most. That's what you think about the most. First thing to come to your mind, the first thing that comes in your heart is what you've been focusing on. You ever watch a movie? There's <laughs> another one. There are times I have watched a movie. It may not be a bad movie. It may be a wonderful movie. But the movie had such an impact or the acting was so phenomenal. It took me half the day to get that movie off my mind. Now, what I'm trying to say is whatever has got your attention can lift you up or drag you down. Now, let's move to Psalms 37. Now, this is something that the world is focusing on right now. Evildoers, the schemes of the wicked, the government and its games, science and its experiments on, on humanity, all the things, the tragedies, the disasters, wars, rumors of wars, Fears, uh, financial struggle, 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 sickness, sickness, sickness. I mean, it's just, that is the focal point right now of this day and age. One, and I'll read until the Lord has me stop. Fret not thyself. Fretting, fretting, fretting. I got to interrupt that. You're, you're fretting. What about this? Did you hear about that? And, oh my goodness. I don't know what we're going to, okay, now we got to make sure. But uh, fretting, fretting. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Well, how come they get by? How come, you know, they don't have to worry about getting put in jail? I get a traffic ticket and they want to throw, 
throw me under the jail and throw the key away. They want me in there for life. But no, they don't have to pay penalties. They don't have... Mm. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good and do good and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily, which means truthfully, truly, thou shalt be fed. Famine or no famine, thou shalt be fed. Water or no water, thou shalt be fed. Money or no money, thou shalt be fed. In the name of Jesus, I'm feeling this. Focus on glory. Focus on God. Focus on his light. He will shed his light in your darkness. He will light your pathway. Verse 4. Delight thyself. This is the key. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It didn't say walk the straight and narrow 100% perfectly. Strive for perfection. Do all you can do. And when you mess up, remember to confess it and ask God to forgive you and get your butt lined up again. But all that you do, let it be because you delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, not unto the government, not unto Homeland Security, not unto the stimulus package. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, baby. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to kick it, baby. You see me resting in my recliner? Let me kick back in my recliner. I want y'all to see me kicking it. Yeah. See me copping them Z's? <sighs> Don't bother me. I'm chilling. The boat's reeling and rocking, taking in water, but I'm chilling. I'm like Jesus. I'm chilling. <sighs> yeah. Rest. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. AI. Homeland Security, coronavirus, mandatory vaccines, the mark of the beast, mandatory this, mandatory that, blah, 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 this conspiracy, that conspiracy, Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait, pardon the Lord, I'm waiting on you, Lord, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I've been at the salon working with some characters, y'all. I've had some people rise up on, in my face, had me shaking at the knees, had me intimidated. I'm going to God. Oh, God. Woe is me, Lord. Lord, where are you? You got to come rescue me. They're going to do this, and they're going to do that, and they're going to do the other. And the Lord led me to Isaiah chapter 7, plain as day. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. Okay. That's Isaiah 7, 7. 
Okay. Okay. So that means they're not going to take me to court. That means they're not going to come and raise Cain in the salon. That means they're not going to rise up against me in church. That means it's not going to stand. It's not going to come to pass. If you do not believe, you shall not be established. I believe, I believe. Establish me, Lord. I believe. Okay. Where is your focus? There's a song, focus on glory. You can't make it on your own. Focus on glory and keep singing spirit songs. Oh, what joy to know that in him we're on top of the world. Don't matter if everything is at the bottom of the barrel. In him you're on the mountaintop. In him you're safe. In him you're provided for. In him you're at peace and rest. When all hell is breaking loose, what was Jesus doing at the bottom of the boat? Brother man was sleeping while everybody else was bailing water and throwing things overboard and having a hissy fit and panic attacks. Lord, wake up. We perish. I know he must have looked at him and said, you going to perish while I'm on this boat. Really? You really believe what you just said? Huh? I was asleep. And you just interrupted my rest. Okay. Peace be still. He probably went back down, went back to sleep. <laughs> you know, we forget who is on our side. If God be for you, who? Who can be against you? Not a demon in hell. Not a demon on your job. Not the coronavirus. Not a heart condition. You know what they told me in the hospital? They told me, they diagnosed me with congestive heart failure. The doctor admitted when I went for a follow-up check, he said, to be honest with you, we didn't think you were going to make it look like everything in your body was failing. And I told him, I said, well, I got a word from God. And God told me, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. For the Lord has not, the Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not turned me over unto death. So I knew I wasn't going anywhere. I knew God was working out some details in my body. The whole thing was in God's hands. The whole thing was orchestrated by God. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't an oops. It wasn't an attack from the enemy. The whole thing was orchestrated by God. Me battling demons and me ministering to the to the nurses that was close the door and sit down and cry their hearts out. Well, I can barely catch my breath, but God gave me words for them to lift their spirits and pray for them. So not only was he having me there for him to take care of me, because he told me I'm taking care of you now. I didn't have time to take care of me. I was taking care of my husband. Lord, let me know I'm taking care of you now. Well, I'm in good hands. So they can cry AFib. They can cry, that's, that's irregular heartbeat. They can cry congestive heart failure. They can try, cry anything they want to cry. But God declares and decrees that I'm healed. That's what the word says. That's what my focus is on. So what do I do? Lord, help me get information. All the information I can get so I can do in the natural to work in cooperation with what you're doing in the supernatural. So I take natokinase for blood thinners to keep my blood from clotting and to dissolve whatever clots are scratching their head trying to jump off. Right? I sit up there. I take 
uh, uh, water out, all kind of stuff to help me get rid of excess fluid. I take the medication they gave me, but I take a lot of stuff, collagen. I take hyaluronic acid. I take Shackley multivitamins. I take vitamin B complex. I take vitamin C capsules and vitamin C in the powder. I take everything I can take to help my body heal itself. I don't eat fried chicken. I don't eat French fries. I don't eat all kind of crap at Popeye's and all these fast food places. I don't eat hamburgers. I am 95% vegetarian. Now, I'm not trying to focus on me. What I'm trying to share with you is part of your healing, part of your deliverance, part of the solutions to your problems will require your participation. God will give you instruction, hints, all kind of, all kind of clues if you're willing to walk in them. But if people are telling you, stop this, stop that, but you can't because you just got to have the good stuff, and then you're back in the hospital, you can't look at God cockeyed. He sent you to help. You got to utilize it or be held by the gunpoint, by what's threatening you. There are times when God will have you do something that is totally out of water for you. God moved me from Pasadena, 65 miles away, to a town I knew nothing about other than where my brother lived. I knew nothing about this place. Didn't know if I'd even like it. But because God told me while I was in foreclosure, the Lord shall choose your inheritance for you. I wasn't trusting in my problems. I was trusting in his promise. Do you hear what I'm saying? Where is your focus? Where is your trust? I don't trust those pills I take. I'm waiting for God to tell me when to stop taking them. If God doesn't say it, I won't do it. Because he's in control of my body and he knows what I don't know. All I pray is God don't let it set up a chain reaction of problems and, 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 um, what's the other word? Complications. Just keep me protected, Lord. Let it do what the good is supposed to do and don't let it do any harm in any way, shape, or form. That's the way I pray over those meds. But I make sure I do everything in the natural that my pocketbook will let me do to help my body heal itself. So I don't eat the pork. I don't drink the liquor. I don't smoke the cigarettes. I don't eat the hot dogs. Unless I'm eating Loma Linda vegetarian hot dogs. They're low in sodium. And you can boil some more sodium out of them bad boys and season them up. I'm telling you, there are so many ways. I did the same thing my cousin did. She did better than me. She lost 200. I only lost 95 pounds. But that was a lot to me. But the point is... You want to do what's in your power to do. God will give you the power. He'll give you instruction. He'll, he'll lead you every step of the way. Rashad, he, he moved, th uh, uh, what, thousands of miles north of him. He's not even in a state anymore, let alone the city. And God blessed him with two jobs. He could just eeny, meeny, miny, mo. See, when you're focusing on the light, when you're focusing on God, God does the impossible. With man, it's an, it, yeah, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All I can ask you to do is change your focus. Please. Change your focus, y'all.
You can focus on tarot cards. You can focus on the 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 uh the psychic hotlines. You can focus on crystals. You can focus on any anything out there. New way. You can hug a tree and pray to it. Do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to tell you right now, all you're doing is opening doors to demonic activity. And once you lose your mind, baby, you've lost it. Focus on God. That I don't know how to drive that point home. All hell is breaking loose over there. Uh, uh, hurricanes over here. Tornadoes out yonder. Floods over in this city. Fires in that city. There, it's just... Things are popping up all over the place. Are you running around putting out the fires? Oh, got to put out this fire. Oh, here's another problem. Got to put out this fire. Oh, here's an old. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, you guys. Help me put out this fire. Get the bail. Get the water. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hmm. Where's your focus? Where's your energy? What are you paying attention to? Some of y'all will listen to 50 YouTube videos a day talking about everything that's going wrong around the world and you're lucky if God gets 10 minutes of your time in the Word. What are you focusing on? And you wonder why you're so wrecked with fear. Anxiety attacks. Say what? With the God you serve, you're having anxiety attacks? What's up with that? Your focus. That's what's up with it. And I pray that God helps you make a determined decision to change and shift your focus on the word of God, on prayer, on the people of God, on the testimonies of God, on the miracle working power of God, on the mercy of God, the favor of God, the authority of God, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Be encouraged, y'all. Lift up your head unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And don't, 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 don't uh, gossip about all the problems. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all my diseases. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You saying bless the Lord or yo, screw them, screw them. I hope they die and rot in hell. No, bless the Lord on oh my soul. Change your focus, y'all. You'll waste so much less energy on the things that don't count. Huh. Okay, I'm going to hush because I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. But I really hope that that encouraged you to decide where you're going to put your your focus i'm getting out of breath wearing myself out trying to convince y'all anyway god bless you it's not by might nor by power by his spirit so i'm not going to try to do this myself and i'm i'm shutting up now so i don't get in my flesh god bless you guys be encouraged god is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in you. God bless you. And I'm done. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good word.